Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In this video, we're going to be looking at AMC Entertainment, taking some more AMC and Ape. In today's video, we're going to be looking at why AMC is experiencing the increases right now due to the fact that people have to cover FTDs on AMC and Ape, but how during the same time, while the price is going up, they're still trying to suppress the price so it doesn't go past pivotal point. We're also going to be looking at how some funds are already dumping assets in order to meet margin calls and what this means for us. And then later on at the end, talking about how AMC briefly covered a DRS as well so make sure you guys watch until the very end as always we're going to start with the chart for amc and ape today so amc today we are up 3.25 closing at 604 so again we've broken now we've gone back up above this 596 whilst bearing in mind that we did of course make a new market low down uh, at this level at low of 547 but we did close above kind of that previous market low where we had and so in a kind of a macro perspective this is somewhat good what we're seeing right now of course this does got to do with the cover of ftds and we have also talked about how data point shows that we were bound for reversal looking at 30 to 100 percent bounce and so this could be the beginning now what of course we want to do is of course close in my opinion close above 623 as that will be a key pivotal point for amc or of course be discussing more on that later on but for me right now i do want to see it close above 623 as you guys can see we saw from the resistance coming in from today and yesterday but if we are able to close above it that will be extremely extremely good next thing we're going to be looking at is of course ape so ape today had a better day as opposed to amc Whilst we were both green, Ape was actually up 10.98%. We closed at 182. So right now, again, like I said, for Ape, we have still not found a bottom. And even though these bounces are good, we need them to really solidify and actually prove that this is the bottom before we can identify you know, whether or not this is extremely good or just good. Previous times we had obviously days where it was green, you know, and again, we kind of saw the price going down below, for example, a 12.3% day. But yeah, we saw, see, still saw the price, of course, go down. And so whilst we did, of course, get a green day, we need to understand where the bottom is because if, if there's no bottom, the price will, of course, continue collapsing below that particular price. But let's take a look at some of the news today. So the first thing is on AMC. So AMC volume had a 5% spike today on the NY. SE. Whenever this happens, there's a trend of AMC price starting to run. It seems this happens when they have to cover some FTDs. Once they are done, they short it back down and increase off exchange trading volume to suppress the price. So this is what we're seeing right now in terms of why we are looking at potentially AMC going up. Of course, there is other data, but we're also seeing some potential FTDs being covered right now. Now, someone asked the question of, but how can they cover when we aren't selling? Are they covering FTDs with fake shares? Avi later on replies with, somebody is always selling, maybe not apes, but day traders, etc. They cover small amounts. Trying to cover large amounts will cause a rip. They don't want that. And again, of course, we understand why FTD in the first place was an important factor because if they were forced to cover all the FTDs, we would have to get a massive spike in price, which could potentially trigger the squeeze. And right now, that's why in order for them to cover FTDs, they're covering small amounts at the time. But not only that, I'm going to be later on talking about how they're also trying to suppress the price down. So if they don't suppress the price, what you can look at is because of the fact they have to cover FTD, we, whilst we got 3.25% on AMC, again, like I said, 12% on A, but 3.25% on AMC, if they weren't surprised, suppressing the price, we could have seen AMC actually go up 10%, but because we saw them suppressing prices at 325 and this is, of course, to stop the price go up even further, because anything that will cause the price, of course, to increase to a higher rate will ruin their short position and will cause them to, of course, cover their short positions as well. The next thing we're going to be looking at is from user of intellect which talks about about 22 million dollars in the money puts have been purchased this past week to suppress amc price this tactic is very costly and it's done when there are no shares to short and you create synthetic shorts and make mark them long obv plus ton of rate plus volume equals retail not selling and of course we understand this so when you do see the price of course being pressed down this is what happening this is the tactic that they are using so this is done by pass reporting uh, by bypassing reporting of si and take advantage of infinity loops and settlement gaps a true violation of bona fide market making duty and so this is of course just another tactic that they use in order to bring the price down and you can understand why they are trying to of course bring the price down if you take a look back at the charts we talked about how 
Being breaking above previous market lows is of course pivotal point. If you go below a market low and you're not able to break above it and you stay below and close below it, you're likely to see kind of the stock going down further. But if it does break the market low, but you know, again, doesn't actually break it and goes back up and you actually support it upwards, of course, we're gonna see the price going up. And so it's a battle of whether we can get it to the upper side of the pivotal point or the lower side of the pivotal point. Of course, for us, the apes, the long buyers, we of course want it above, but for the short sellers, they need it below and hence why they're putting all this pressure. Something that obviously they don't have, um, or rather something that we don't have, but they have, is of course the, the power to be manipulating price, to be using these strategies and tactics, but we don't have. But again, like I said, and what also user of intellect said, it's very costly. You know, this is just one tactics that they use. And again, this is costing a high amount. Whereas us holding onto shares, it will not cost us anything but time, whereas it will cost them money. And again, in this current market condition, costing them money, anything that costs a high amount of money could lead to bad things. Now, something that we have mentioned in our previous video, so guys, if you guys don't want to make sure you don't miss out on the video, make sure you click that subscribe button down below. It's essentially the retail shareholders have taken control of another 8% of the company. And a quick update was that we'll have 100% confirmation that all 40 million shares went to retail if we don't see any significant rise in overall institutional ownership over the next 45 days. So this is of course going off of my previous video, which I talked about in terms of the price and uh, you know the 8% ownership. And it's just something that of course, everyone should be keep up to date to, especially if I cover it on my video. Now, we're gonna be taking a look at actually UK pension funds are dumping assets to meet margin calls and the reverberations are being felt everywhere from Sydney to Frankfurt and to New York. And essentially, of course, it's just like the caption, they are dumping assets in order to meet margin calls. So this is the current market that we are in right now. And I think, I just think it's gonna be a domino effect where whilst we are seeing that right now in UK pension funds, with we like they say here, it's being felt from Sydney to Frankfurt and to New York. We're definitely gonna be seeing more funds and more firms, not just pension funds, also needing to dump assets in order to meet margin calls. Right now, we're just seeing an overall downfall in the market. And of course, what this could mean for us is potential firm start of shorting AMC. We'll also have to dump assets and they will have to make a decision whether or not they want to dump you know the long assets to double down on amc or to make sure they can still operate their amc short positions or they'll have to cover their amc short positions in order to keep their long position on or to pay off other fees and that is something that of course we will be seeing and either ways are of course good because if they have to sell other positions it just means that the pressure we can apply onto them is even higher but if they don't decide to do that if they decide to you know if they work out the opportunity cost and figure out maybe it's better for them to cover amc positions of course that will be when we get the short squeeze because they will need to buy the real shares of amc off of the market and the people with real amc shares of course people like um, people that are watching their apes people like day traders and again that is of course when you will see AMC being able to have that short squeeze, being able to have the ability to be selling at a higher rate for these hedge funds to be covering their prices. And so for, I think, you know, later on into the market, especially upcoming months, we're definitely gonna be looking at a lot more pressure in the market, especially from these firms as well. So that's of course something we should be watching out for. And now take a look at the last thing before we kind of go on the conclusion in terms of what I think about AMC in this current state right now and what we should be looking out for. One of the things that they talked about in the last annual report that AMC released in March was a brief mention of kind of um, DRS where they talked about there were 8,963 stockholders of record of a class A common stock. And of course, this is just talking about a way to pretty much be able to count their shares and you know this is 8963 of course if everyone owns just one share they can at least know that there's 8963 8, shares of course and so etc etc and that's just a quick mention of course they didn't obviously go more into it but maybe potentially with what we're seeing overall in the social media in the internet right now maybe the next report or the next subject that adam adam talks about could be more about in terms of share count and stuff like that but let's take a look at fun, kind of the final conclusion. We're almost going into the end of week, what we should be expecting for AMC. And especially right now, of course, like I said, we talked about the potential reversal that we could be seeing for AMC, which is 30 to, of course, 100%. We also have the fact that they have to cover FTDs. Whilst we may not be looking at an even bigger price increase because of the price suppression, we're definitely going to be looking at some upsides. Now, 
Bear in mind that any upside gives the incentive, invites more people to, of course, buy into AMC, which again can elongate that kind of effect. And that's not what hedge funds want to see. So whilst that is something that is on our mind, we have to understand that there will always be pressure. And if they see anything that can increase the price even more, they will increase their pressure as well to match that to make sure the price doesn't increase. And so that's what we have to look out for. Anyway, guys, that's it for the video. I hope you guys did enjoy it. If you guys did, make sure to press that like and subscribe button down below. And I'll catch you guys next time.